I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. You are looking right now at the new Runcam Swift 2 Rotoriot Edition, and I'm going to show you the one thing I saw that finally made me go, I got to review this camera. And while I'm reviewing this camera, I'm going to just, we're going to just compare it against a whole bunch of other cameras that I've had sitting around, and I just haven't, I've just been too busy to do a review of. In fact, one of them that you're really going to be interested in is the Runcam Sparrow, which I believe is the first 16.9 micro camera. So, and we've got a bunch of other cameras too. Stay tuned. You guys have really high standards for me, and that's partially my fault for setting a high standard for myself. A lot of my videos, I do huge in-depth data gathering comparisons, side-by-sides, and, and that's fine. Um, but sometimes I just want to, you know, get out a review video. Like right now we're looking at the Runcam Swift 2 Rotoriot Edition. And, uh, I saw something really cool about this camera that made me want to show it to you. And then I thought as long as I'm showing it to you, well, let's take a look at all these other cameras. But I don't want you guys to think that just because I'm showing you five or six different cameras that I think this is like some kind of a be all end all shootout. It's just like, Hey, as long as we got six cameras, let's look at them. And, uh, yeah. So. That's what we're going to do, and we'll start with the Runcam Swift 2 Rotoride Edition. Now, I have adjusted the uh, brightness and contrast in my goggles to something that looks okay to me, and I'm not going to change that at all at any point in this video. So I'll always be looking at a consistent thing. But you guys should know that you can adjust the brightness and contrast in your goggles, and it makes a big difference in what you're seeing. I actually didn't know you could do this for a long time, uh, and I was seeing all these washed out things on my screen, and then once I could adjust it, it was a big deal. So if you if you haven't played with that, do play with that. Left, right is contrast, and up, down on the joystick for Fat Sharks is brightness. You could definitely uh, improve your picture. I don't even know if that'll affect the DVR, though. So uh, anyway, I don't want you to know I'm leaving it alone. And I'm also going to test these cameras at their default settings. I know you can tweak them to get them to look better, but it's kind of a rabbit hole uh, of, of tweaking and what's the best and then I, if I, I would never get to look at them all. So we're just going to test them at default and see how they perform. And this camera, to my eyes, you can certainly see, it looks to me like the trees off in the distance are definitely lost in blackness. And I also notice that the bright parts of the scene here are getting just a little bit blown out. Um, you can see it. Let's see if I turn around. Yeah. It's not so bad. Oh, get out of there. What's that? Get out of there. <laughs> um, getting just... But I see it on the gravel on the driveway. Just a little blown out there. Losing some detail in the highlights. Now let's walk for a little bit. And let's see how it performs. Uh, going into the sun. Not bad. The sun's in the sky, but I can still see, you know, if I were flying down the driveway, I certainly could still see. Definitely getting some lens flare there from this big old GoPro lens, this GoPro style lens that the Rotorite guys put on there. Overall, though, not bad. You can certainly still see the ground to fly off of, no question. And as we go into the shadows, let's see how it adjusts to the shadows. Now we've got a fine contrast adjustment here. You know, we certainly are our brightness. We're certainly seeing lots of detail here. You can certainly see, oh, that's actually not bad. You can see if you look out in the field, hang on right over there, you can see that's blown out there. That's white. But if I move just a little bit, it comes into detail green and, and readjusts. And that's really, that's really not bad. The, 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 the dynamic range or the exposure algorithm is doing a pretty good job. Now, how does it do as we come? Oh yeah, see, if I'm right here, you can see a lot of spots where it's blown out white, especially over here. But as I just come up this way, it adjusts instantly. And that is the thing that actually really impressed me about this camera was the, uh, the exposure algorithm is really quick. So let's see if I can make it happen. Look how fast that goes. I'm going to show you that same thing on other cameras. Look how fast it adjusts to being in the dark. Pretty freaking fast. And you can see also uh, that 
it's like the Swift 2. It's got the built-in OSD that shows you battery voltage, call sign, and a timer. So if you need to put an OSD on your quad and you don't have a Betaflight OSD or something like that, this is a really, really simple way to do it. Uh, you just measure your pack voltage uh, right down there in the lower left. And some people say that's all you need. Now then, let's see here. What else have I got? The next one I want to show you... Let's just dump this out. Oh, right, the 16.9 Sparrow. F me. Oh, hang on. Oh, there we go. There's the Sparrow. Now, this is... You can tell that this is a compressed image because I have a 4.3 display. I, I'll try and I'll letterbox this when I actually do the video in post-production. And these are HD2 goggles, so they don't have the ability to show 16.9 content. And... It's got really rich colors. It kind of looks like the lens is out of focus. The greens are super rich. Yeah, do you see down here? It looks out of focus almost. I don't know why that is. Let's see if I can fix it. I think the sun is changing position. That may, it's definitely darker here than it was. I still can, I'm not losing all this stuff in shadow though. I still can see details here. It's not just completely dark. Nice crisp, wow. This is a CMOS looking image, but without the, without the kind of weird jaggies. Oh, I can almost see it if I pay really close attention. It almost looks like there's some of that noise like the um, Eagle had, but gosh, it's not quite it's not as bad. And how do we in the dark? Exposure algorithm isn't as quick, but it's not bad here. Let's get the sun in the feet in view. I mean, we can still see some detail down here in the ground or even over here. The dynamic range algorithm seems to be doing an okay job and Oh, that's pretty good. Wow. The Sparrow is a good kiss. It's even better. Wow. I feels to me like this is uh, some kind of Gen 2 or new generation of technology from Runcam that maybe we'll see it in other cameras. It's a, It looks like a CMOS image. I don't know whether this is a CMOS or a CCD camera, but the richness of the color and the dynamic range, it doesn't have that kind of... Uh, well, uh, wide dynamic range will, uh, will look less contrasty. It looks contrasty like a CCD, but it has a sort of a richness of color and uh, makes me think of a CMOS, but I don't know. Let me just look it up. <laughs> Why would I do that? <laughs> I really like that image. That's a good, too bad I don't fly 16.9. Next one I want to show you is the Swift 2 Micro. Is that the Swift 2 or is it the Sparrow? The Micro Swift 2, yeah, that's what that is. So hold on one second while I get that going. So here is the Swift 2 Micro. And damn, <laughs> if it isn't impressive what Runcam has done with micro cameras, the, I would almost defy you to pick this camera out of a lineup compared to like a Runcam Swift or another one. I do think there are small differences in the picture quality if you really get into it. If you really put them side by side, I think that the image from the uh, micro is slightly worse. And the reason for that has to be the lens. I'm told that the, I used to think that the image sensor was smaller on this, but I'm told that it's the same size. So the reason has to be the lens. If, if there is a difference, maybe I'm just imagining it, but golly, that is not freaking bad. Let's see how it does when I put my hand over the lens. You see how long that took to come back? Compared to the Rotoriot Swift 2? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And th I'm, that's a really dramatic example of the exposure algorithm at work. But it, the same thing happens when we, let's see if we can, dip, so again, if we look out in the field here, it's blown out. It hasn't come back yet. It's, there it is. Now it finally came back. 
See how long it takes for that blown out field? Now it's blown out. Look over there. It's white. Now watch how long it takes for it to turn green. There it was. So that fast exposure algorithm on the new Rotoriot Swift 2 is, is the thing that really knocked my socks off. It was this test that really knocked my socks off and made me think that was a heck of a good camera. But golly, the mini, or the micro rather, could you believe a camera this small would look this good? I mean, think back to the camera that came on your little three inch, uh, you know, whatever copter six months or a year ago, however long, it was terrible. This is almost as good as a full size camera. Okay, next, I wanna show you the, let's compare it next to the, this is the Fox Ear Micro, Fox Ear Aero 2 Micro. So it's essentially a direct competitor to the Swift Micro. So the exposure is definitely, like for example, look at the van, the van and the barn are completely blown out. Now that certainly could be adjusted using the brightness and contrast settings in the OSD, but I said I was gonna test these on their defaults and I am. Decent performance with the sun in the sky. The sky of course is blown out, but the ground is not, we're not really completely losing the ground in shadow. Now this is supposed to have a wide dynamic range algorithm. I'm not sure how that really manifests exactly. Yeah, definitely a lot of highlights here. I could certainly try to adjust my goggles, although I said I'm not gonna do that and I'm not. And I certainly could adjust the brightness and contrast, but let's go back to the uh, Swift Micro and just check to make sure I didn't miss that. And see if it's default settings at least are doing a better job or if I'm just imagining it. Yeah, it's a little blown out too. I was also seeing it up close though. Let's go up close. Yeah, the run cam is a little blown out too. Definitely if we look at the van right here, it's blown out too. I think it's not quite as bad, but that could just be because I think if you see, it looks to me like it's got a wider angle lens. Let's see what we got here. This is a 2.1 millimeter lens. And the Swift Micro has a, doesn't say. So there's the Swift Micro and Sorry, that was the, the, the Fox Ear Aero Micro. Here's the Swift. Yeah, no, the Swift has a wider angle lens. Of course, you can order them with whatever lens you want. Now, the next thing I want to compare it to is the Eagle 2. This is the Runcam Eagle 2. This is a very different looking image, isn't it? A very different looking image. I... I really go back and forth on this image. So you can see up here in the trees, there's all this shimmering and you, it's gonna look even worse with YouTube's compression, frankly. Uh, it, it's, it's very distracting here. And I don't know if I've adjusted this camera. This is the default settings. Um, what I typically do with my Eagle camera is go in and Turn the sharpness down. Okay, yeah, so this is the default settings, and I find that if I uh, set the default, the, the sharpness to about four, so now I've deviated. I'm changing the sharpness setting, but not the exposure settings. I find if I set the sharpness to about four, then it's not as bad, but boy, it's still there. It's It's... Now you can turn the sharpness down even further, but then the picture gets to look really soft. But if you can tolerate that, I think this is just by far the best looking picture out of any of them. It's so colorful and the dynamic range is so good by which I mean, like you can see, if you look over here, you can see just the tiniest bit more of detail there in the trees, for example. And you see it, it's more, uh, it's more noticeable in light shadows here where you don't lose ground detail like you do with the other cameras. This is really my favorite camera, especially now that the Eagle 2 has 
lower latency compared to the Eagle 1, which was a little bit... Eagle 2 has about the same latency as a Swift... Uh, certainly a Swift 1, maybe even a Swift 2. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, and some of you hate it, I know. See, we're not... The sun is not just a big blown out blob blowing out the whole image here. It's got such better exposure handling. But then if you look here in the, de in the gravel, as I move, boy, see that, that kind of break up there from the sharpening algorithm? And I said you could turn that down and you can if we go here and if we turn it way down, see now it's almost gone. It's still kind of there. And if I turn the sharpening all the way down, it pretty much goes away. But the problem is then the image gets almost like this watercolor pastel softness to it where it looks out of focus. It's not, but it looks out of focus. So I find that around three or four is about where I like it. And I just, I get such a good looking image in, ex in exchange for the, uh, in exchange for that shimmering. The last one we're gonna do is the Foxier Aero Mini. Get some love for Foxira in here. Here's the Aero Mini. And gosh, it looks very similar to the Aero, to the, to the Micro, honestly. A little dark in the ground there. I'm not sure how much of that is because the sun has changed position. It looks really dark facing this way, I'll tell you what. Wow. Let's just redo the test with one of the other cameras to make sure that it's not, it's really dark in the ground there. Hang on. I think it was worse on the Mini, the Aero Mini. Yeah, hang on, let's go back. Yeah, I think it's worse, I think it's darker. Much darker here at the fence, for example. Anyway, there you go. Well, let's go do the other test as long as we're, as long as we're here. I think even almost the, uh, to me, uh, to my memory, even the, the micro was better than this. Yeah. I think this is my least favorite of all of them. Yeah. The Rotor Riot Swift certainly beats the pants off of them with, with that test. And... I think it's doing a worse job with dynamic range overall and exposure. So, but like I said, this is not a hard, rigorous scientific test. This is just checking out some cameras. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Uh, so I could certainly adjust the brightness and contrast in the arrow here. I'm sure this is a fine camera. We're just kind of looking at the out of the box. And here we are back to the Runcam Swift 2 Rotorite Edition. Frankly, I'm hard pressed to pick a winner. They all look pretty freaking good. Uh, like I said, this is not a huge, rigorous scientific test. I only looked at the default. I didn't actually fly the freaking things. Let me just preempt all of your objections. But I, I did want to show you the really cool uh, algorithm, the, the exposure algorithm on this camera, if nothing else. Thank you for watching. Leave any questions, comments, etc. down in the comments. And happy flying.